How's everybody doing today? Yeah, doing good? How many people came to the uh, worship and healing night on Friday night? Man, was that great or what? So, so good. All right, well, I am excited to worship today. I'm going to pray and we're going to get rolling here. Father, thank you so much for your presence in this place. Lord, thank you for everything that you've been doing in this, uh, in this house, in this community, in this body, in this city, Lord. And we thank you that we go from glory to glory and from faith to faith. Father, I pray for an overflowing uh, of your presence in this room, God. Open up the eyes of our understanding to see you, to hear you, to experience you today. We thank you for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen.
Max, if I haven't met you, we wanted to take a minute as we continue into worship to just testify to what Jesus is doing in our midst. We had our first healing night um, Friday night this past week, and lots of people got touched by the Lord, um, but one in particular was Jen, and we wanted to invite you up to share what Jesus did. Um, we had people, we had multiple people, if you don't know how it's set up, it's a time to just, you can come on up here, uh, it's just a time to connect and be with the Lord and soak in his presence and then there's appointments that you can um, sign up for or register for in the back prayer room and we had multiple people coming back in tears into the prayer room saying how they were already encountering the Lord uh, just sitting in here being with him and um, that's my favorite when Jesus does what Jesus does um, so anyways Jen why don't you share what why don't you tell them what the problem was um, I came for other reasons for prayer, for emotional healing, um, and God gave you a word of knowledge asking if I had lower back pain, and I, I came with pain, so he was all like, yes, you came with pain. <laughs> He's like, that's so we can see what God does, and you three guys put your... What was, what was the pain from? Um, I have stenosis in my lower back. And um, I had kind of overused my back that day. And so I, um, if I twisted, I could feel sharp pain and it shoots down my leg. And he totally had a word of knowledge that just called that out. What's stenosis? It's a narrowing of, um, it's like a calcification. It's, yeah, it's, it was from a car accident that I was in when I was in high school. So then what happened? So then the three of you put your hands on my back and I could just feel like three fiery handprints on my back. It was, it was so powerful um, and yet surrounded by this sense of peace. Um, the thing that was so amazing to me is that um, it wasn't like something we had to work up. It wasn't something I had to war for. Um, I wasn't even asking God to do that. And just, he's so kind <laughs> that he just, aside from the emotional things that he was doing, he was like, I'm just going to throw that in as a bonus. That's amazing. Show, show him what you could do. Yeah. So the pain left immediately. I was able to stand up and twist and no, no pain at all. And it's gone. Hallelujah. Yeah. fun. Let's worship. We've seen what you can do, oh God of wonders. Your power has no end. And the things you've done before in greater measure. You will do again Cause there's no prison Wall you can't break through No mountain you can't move All things are possible And there's no broken body you can't raise Oh, my God. 
are doing in this season. God, we put all of our hope, all of our trust in you, Father. I thank you that you can light up the darkness, God, and that you will. You are doing that right now, God, that you are moving where we can't even see you, and, and you are showing us glimpses of that, God, that you are in this time pouring out miracles. You are answering prayers, God. You are speaking to our hearts and speaking to other people through us, Father. And so I just thank you for that. I thank you that you are moving, that you are working, God, and, and that you are calling us back to your heart, Father. You are awakening our hearts. God, I just thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for the awakening.
down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I just keep feeling as we're singing that there's so much scripture that says when we ask, we will receive. When we ask, he does pour out. And I just feel like he wants to do that this morning, that there's things that you've been asking him that he wants to pour that out even this morning. So just be ready for it. Be ready for the answers to come. God, we're ready for you.
So you have this picture. Um, we've had a lot of internet issues uh, going on here, and I was here yesterday, and there was the internet is there, but my connection was lost. And I heard the Lord say that for many of you, your connection has been lost. That though the internet is still there, though he is still there, there's been a loss of connection. So we had someone come in and they spent hours trying to figure it out, moving this around, moving that around, putting this, plugging this in, unplugging that, rewiring this, rerouting that. And then all of a sudden, connection was found. And I feel like God's going to show you in your heart, there's been a longing to feel the connection that you once used to have with the Lord, but your connection is lost. And it's not because he has disconnected it, it's because of something that you have, don't even, you're not, not even be aware of, but there's been a disconnection on your part. And the Lord's going to begin, there's, a, there's an anointing, and he's already started, but there's, there's a presence. We are a presence-driven church, and there is a presence of God here this morning to bring healing to your soul to bring healing to areas where you've, you're disconnected and God's going to reconnect. And there's no shame in the things that you've done in the past. There's no, your past doesn't define you. It only refines you. And God's going to take whatever it is that has caused that disconnection and you're going to get reconnected. And it's happening right now. It's happening right now. Even as I am talking, I can see that it is happening right now. There's a rerouting that is taking place. And God's putting all things back in order. There's someone here today that you've been contending for two years for healing. It's been two years you've asked God and you've prayed and you've prayed and you've prayed. You've had prayer and you've been prayed over and prayed over and prayed over. And I don't know who that is, but if you'd raise your hand, God's going to heal you this morning. That thing is gone, whatever it is. I declare right now that by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. I declare that the contending is over and that you are healed in the name of Jesus. And if you're watching online and that's you as well, you've been contending for two years. You've been asking God for healing. You've been asking him to touch you. It's not because he hasn't wanted to touch you. There's something that's coming into alignment in your body right now. And there's a healing that is taking place. I declare it and I thank you for it, God, in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, give God praise. If you are here and you know that that is you and you can feel, you know with all certainty that God has just healed you, I want you to raise your hand because I want him to get glory. I want him to be glorified. And don't do it for me. I'm not the one that I, I'm seeking eternal rewards. I'm not seeking temporal rewards. I want eternal rewards. So I declare that if you have been sick in your body, you have had pain in your body, that there's an alignment coming into your body right now, and that you are made whole. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Go deeper, God, in our hearts. We thank you that the connection is found.
up here. I knew the Lord was going to heal. Listen to this testimony. So I've been an avid runner my whole life. And when um, just before I hit 30 years old, I in 2011, I got a flare of a ganglion cyst in my left foot. And it's just been a struggle ever since. And I stopped running. So I got surgery. And then that didn't do anything. In 2014, I got a series of cortisone shots, and then last week, the pain was so bad that I was like, I need to get back in the doctor and get some more shots, so I went last week, and ever since then, every day since then, it's just been so painful, and just right now, I was standing, and I was like, I need to sit down, this is so painful, and then she got up here and started talking, and I was like, oh, I don't think this is for me. I really want this healing for somebody who's really suffering, you know. So I put my foot up, and I was like, well, I'm going to pray over my foot anyways. And I just started asking, Lord, if I can receive part of this. I don't feel anything. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> That's our God. Amen. Come on, let's continue to worship.
Jesus, we thank you that you are inviting us into more. I thank you, God, that your love never ends. I thank you, Father, that we don't arrive in your love, that it, it, you never change, but our understanding of how good you are, how caring you are, how generous you are does grow. And I just I thank you for that invitation into more of your goodness. just give Jesus a thank you for the healings that he's doing. Thank you, Jesus. Ah. I don't, I don't want to bend your arms, but like a real thank you. This is not common. Father, thank you. Thank you for being in our midst, for being Emmanuel. Thank you for moving among us. Ah. <laughs> it says in the scriptures that that's the testimony that he was with them. He, he did miracles among them, testifying that he was alive. And what a privilege it is to know the living God. You guys can have a seat. I'm going to lead us in the offering. I don't know what happened, but it feels like 2020 has is, is, uh, increased us in, in anointing and a power. And uh, I'm really excited about that. I'll take hardships if I get more of Jesus through it. very simple thought that I woke up with this morning. Um, if you'd like to give hi everybody online. Very eager and excited for us all to be together again. I can wait and be patient, but I'm excited to see you all. Um, if you'd like to give, there's a text to give number, and then our ushers are going to um, release us a row at a time so we can social distance, but it was this verse it's, that I was thinking of. It's Proverbs 22 verse 9 says he who has a generous eye will be blessed for he gives of his bread to the poor other translations say he whose eye is good will be blessed for he gives to the poor he who has an abundant eye another one says will be blessed for he gives and I felt like what the Lord was saying is for us to give in faith this morning that there is a hopeful future that we actually have a generous, abundant, good eye. When we look to the things to come, we know they're good. And it causes us, it, it creates a confidence in us to be willing to give of what we have because we know there's more coming. And I'm excited to give into that reality. So you're invited. You know, he's going to take us from glory to glory and strength to strength and faith to faith. That's going to happen. There isn't a plan B to that. There isn't. <laughs> You're, you got on the train. When you were born again, you got onto a train that is going from glory to glory, from faith to faith, and from strength to strength. And the scripture actually says that he takes us He's the one that takes us from glory to glory. This is not dependent on you and I. You can resist it. You can fight it. You can willingly bow to it and enjoy the process. But this is where we're going. So, Father, I thank you that you are taking us from glory to glory. I thank you for a hope, abundant, uh, generous, good eye that we see the future as filled with hope. In Jesus' name, you guys are released to give. Amen. Church Grand Rapids, I'm Ashley Lewis giving you your morning announcements. Fire starters are not going to be released today. They get the pleasure of staying with family in the sanctuary this morning, so enjoy your time. 
Our angel tree is in the lobby. Yay, Christmas time! We are participating with New Branches Charter Academy to provide gifts for kids of families in need. Choose an ornament from the tree and purchase a gift for that child. Please wrap your gift in a gift bag with tissue paper and drop it off under the Well Christmas Tree. The last day to submit gifts is Sunday, December 20th. Please contact Tana Weeks or stop by the bridge for more information. And speaking of Christmas, the Christmas service is coming. We are really excited for our Winter Wonderland Christmas service. It will be a warm and lighthearted experience that you can invite your friends and family to. It will be full of hope and joy, an hour long service with Christmas cheer and a time to reflect on the birth of Jesus. Join us on December 20th for our Christmas service. It's gonna be a really, really great time. We're so excited to see you. Boutique business highlight. This month's business highlight is Pastor Kathy's new boutique called Kathy Ella Lee Collective. This business came after years of developing her own style and helping others decorate their homes. A portion of her proceeds this month are going to C, which is a local organization working to end human trafficking in West Michigan. Explore her collection for kitchen goods, jewelry, and accessories, items to pamper yourself, and to just feel beautiful. So head online, support her business. She's on Instagram, Facebook, check her out. You are not gonna be disappointed. Boom. Um, and then who, she's speaking, she's preaching, she's back. She back, yeah. <laughs> she back. Now please stand and welcome back our apostle of the house and fearless leader, Pastor Kathy El Ali. Oh, no, 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 stand to your feet. You haven't been here for a while, huh? Today is a new day. Today, I'll be transformed by the presence of God, by the power of God, and by the word of God to never be the same in Jesus' name. All right, amen. You can be seated. Wow, wow, that was fun. God is like moving. We're not waiting for 2021. Everybody's like, I can't wait till this year is over. I'm not waiting for a year to be over in order to embrace all that God has for me. We live in the kingdom of God. We don't just live in the United States of America. We're here to live for eternity. Amen? So when you have eternal perspective, you look at things differently. When you have a 70 to 80 year perspective, you look at things differently. But when you take a finite number and you divide it by infinity, do you know what you get? Zero. So how much does this life matter? You take a finite number, you divide it by infinity, what do you have? Zero. So when we look at this life, it's important that we focus on the fact that we're going to have eternal rewards or we're going to have temporal rewards. And I don't know about you, but I'm looking for eternal rewards because we will have rewards in heaven. Turn with me to 2 John 1.8, please. I was thinking about... Um, I don't know, I just woke up this morning like super tired, first of all. How many of you felt that? Yeah, my alarm went off and I forgot it was Sunday. So I just kept pressing snooze. <laughs> it felt great. And then Becca came in my room, flipped on my light, turned my sound machine off and said, aren't you supposed to be up? <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah. So I thought it was rude at first, but yep, I got up and uh, got ready. And as I'm getting ready, I'm just thinking about this. I'm thinking about eternity. I taught on this um, a while back, and um, I don't know if it's the older that I'm getting, but the more I think about it. And I remember when I turned 50, and I'm 52, I'll be 53 next month. Um, amen. Um, and no gray hairs here. <laughs> Not that you know of anyway. Um, you know, actually, I don't even know if I have any gray hairs. 
Uh, probably not. Um, but it does speak of wisdom, so I'll take them. I'll just cover them, but I'll take them. Um, but the importance of what we do here isn't, if, if everything that I do is just for here, like let's say you have a business and you're building your business and you're creating a nest egg for you or you're creating a nest egg for, you know, you and your family. And that's good, but it's not eternal. It doesn't have an eternal reward. What has an eternal reward is if you have that business and you're conducting it in the way of the kingdom and you're affecting people that come into your business or that you are going into their business, whatever it looks like, then you will have an eternal reward. Second John 1 8 says, watch yourselves. Look to your neighbor and say, watch yourself. So that you do not lose what we have accomplished together, but that you may receive a full and perfect reward when he grants rewards to faithful believers. So if there is a full and perfect reward, then there's also a partial or no reward. How many of you want a full reward? I want a full reward. I don't want to get up there and find out that that's it. We, we are living for eternity. If you are born again, you didn't just say a prayer. A prayer is not going to get you to heaven. Prayer is not going to get you in relationship with uh, Jesus. A prayer is a nice starting point, but that's theologically um, inaccurate to think that if you say a prayer that you are born again. What makes you born again is when um, you ha enter into a relationship with Jesus and you realize that you, are you were born into sin and that you have a sin nature and that you basically are dead because that's what happened to Adam and Eve. They died in the garden. Not physically, but they died spiritually. They were now separated from their creator. The reason why we had to have Jesus come in the first place is that Jesus needed to come and restore that which was lost, that which we freely gave away. We gave away. We, we did it. We, took the, we had the choice, and we gave it away. So Jesus came and said, I want to bring you back. So the reason why we can say we are born again is because we acknowledge that we are dead, that we, are, we need to have the life of Jesus, the blood of Christ applied to our life. And so we receive him and we say, Lord, I receive you, Jesus, as my personal Lord and Savior. Then what happens is you become a new creation. If you look up that word, like uh, becoming a new creation, it's metamorpho, and it, honest, it, it, it honestly means that you have become transformed, that you are, you are no longer, it's like a, a caterpillar. <sighs> If when it becomes a butterfly, it's not a caterpillar that just becomes a butterfly. It actually has different organs. Everything changed about it. It's actually a butterfly now. So what happens when you get born again? You no longer have sin nature. You have a totally different new creation. It's just what happened with Jesus when he was on the Mount of Transfiguration. He was transfigured, transformed, completely different. That's what happened to you and I the day that we decided that we were going to lay our life down and pick up the life that God has for us. That means that we get to have the choice not to make our choices. He gives us a free will so we can do whatever it is that we want. But we can choose that we want to do what he wants us to do because then we're going to have an eternal reward. Amen? So... Here's the thing that we don't think about as believers is that we will stand before Jesus and he won't just be our savior, but he'll be our judge. You're not going to be judged as to whether or not your sins are forgiven. If you're a born again believer and you are walking with Jesus Christ and you have made him Lord of your life, then your sins are forgiven. Thank God. Say thank God. Thank God. So when we stand 
in the judgment seat, the Bema, we are going to be standing there to be judged for what we did here. How well did you love? Do you have eternal rewards in how you treat your spouse? It matters to God. Do you have eternal rewards in how you honor and respect your parents? Because it has eternal rewards. You see, there's nothing that you can do to make God love you more. 100%. He's going to love you no matter what you do. But if you want to enter into the pleasure of the Lord, it depends on how you act here. So I've been thinking about this so much more because I'm like, God, I want to run my race in such a way that I win. And I think all of this pandemic and everything going on that oh, there's not a right decision that you can make. No matter what you do, someone doesn't like it. Wear a mask, I don't like it. Don't wear a mask, I don't like that. Go to church and worship, that's crazy. Stay home. Don't stay home. It's like, it doesn't matter what you do. So you have to have an audience of one at right now. And that's the way it should have always been in the first place. That we make our decisions according to our faith and according to what we believe he's directing us to do. 2 Corinthians 5, starting in verse 8. We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well pleasing. That was their greatest aim. Paul said, I want to be well pleasing to him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. He's speaking to believers that we will all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, the terror of the Lord. We, we just want to talk about the love of God. The love of God includes terror. The love of God, that is the love of God. He's righteous and he's holy. So we persuade men, but we are well known to God, and I also trust are well known in your consciences. So I asked myself a question, how well known am I to God? I know that he knows everything about me, but how well known am I to him? How, how much do I open my heart up to him? Because he already knows what's in it. So I'm going to stand someday before him, and I want to be, know that not only is he well pleased with me here and now, but that he'll be well pleased with me when I'm in the judgment seat of Christ. And that there will be a terror in me, a fear of God, that the decisions I make, I don't make for an earthly reward, but I'm making them for an eternal reward. Because I'm going to, we're going to live forever. It's hard to think that way when, when you just can only see like 80 or 85 years. If you make decisions based on 80 plus years, then your decisions will probably be temporal. But I want to rule and reign beside Christ. Now, that doesn't mean that I have to be like Billy Graham. I don't think that Billy Graham is going to have a greater reward than somebody who's serving in a nursery. If they're doing what they're called to do, if you're doing what you're called to do, then you're going to have the same reward as Billy Graham. If Billy Graham did what he was called to do, I don't know. You can say, well, look at the fruit. Well, I don't know. I'm not the judge. There's a book that was written, and those books are going to be compared. What is written in my book is going to be the decisions that I made. Does it match up with the book that God wrote for me? When he opens up the book, he's going to look at his, he's going to look at mine. And then Jesus is going to determine whether I have eternal rewards or temporal rewards. So we'll be judged for our words, our thoughts, our motives, and our attention. Those are the things that we're going to be judged for. 1 Corinthians 4, verse 5, in the New Living Translation, says, 
So don't make judgments about anyone ahead of time before the Lord returns, for he will bring our darkest secrets into light and will reveal our private motives. Then God will give to each one whatever praise is due. He's not talking about an unbeliever. He's not going to be giving praise to an unbeliever. He's talking about believers. And literally, we will be before him. He's going to show the, the, the darkest things that we thought we could just hide. Well, he's not going to know about that. Or he won't care because this over here was so good that this over here that was dark isn't even close to how good this was. So my good's going to outweigh the dark. It's not like that. He's righteous. He's perfect. And he's justice. I t I'm giving you this because I feel like in the body of Christ, we've become Americans instead of Christians. I'm sorry that hurts some of your toes. But I'm not an American. I'm a Christian. And I live in America. If we walk around just saying we're Americans and we get our identity by where we live, what about the people that are in Israel or India? I prayed for a man um, yesterday who Facebook messaged me and said he's been following us and following me, my um, Facebook posts and stuff like that, and he um, considers us to be like spiritual leaders in his life. This is how, like, that's the connection that they have. They don't, he has a, a church that he sent me a video. He said, this was our service this morning. They're like nine hours difference or something like that. I forget, in India. I forget, it's like, when it was morning there, the next day, we're behind him that many hours. So here it is in this room, and there's like maybe 15 or 20 people and they don't have instruments like this. They had a drum. And uh, everyone was just singing and praising God and clapping and dancing. And they didn't identify with their nationality. They identified with the kingdom of God. And that's why we want to identify first and foremost with the kingdom of God. So that we can have eternal rewards. 90% of the time when we see the word judgment, we think of judgment like this, like condemnation. But 90% of the time in the scriptures, it comes from a Greek word called krima. And it literally means this. Judgment on behalf... I'm sorry, I said that and then I, I lost it. A decision resulting from an invest investigation. So when we're judged by God, Jesus, actually, it is because there's a decision that resulted from an investigation. Our lives get investigated. Shoot, it just makes you feel a little different, doesn't it? It's like, I thought I was saved and that's it. I got the grace of God. I can just, whoo, do whatever I want. I mean, you can. That's your choice. But will your book look like his book? Will my book look like his book? You see, I could have a big church and people could be getting saved and healed and delivered. But if I wasn't called to do that, then I'm not going to have an eternal reward because I wasn't doing what I was called to do. So if you're called to be a stay-at-home mom, wow, you do it to the best of your ability with God's grace because you're going to have an eternal reward because you're doing what God called you to do. I can't compare my call with your call. You can't compare your call with my call. But we all are different parts of the body. We're different members of the body. And it's, it says that the, the secret parts, the, the parts that we cover up, that we have, we have more modesty over, that those parts have more honor. So that tells me that when we stand in the judgment seat of Christ, that it's the things that nobody else saw that we did that's going to have the greatest reward. I remember one time, some of you remember me saying this, 
I just moved here, and I had um, a certain amount of money set aside in an account that if this didn't work, this is in 2001, I would have enough money to get back to where I came from. So I was kind of like a fleece, like I'm going to come here, but I'm not going to be in fully because just in case it doesn't go the way that I think it's going to go, I didn't say that, but that's what I was probably thinking, then I have this little safety net over here. Well, the Lord told me to write a check out for that full amount of money. And that was thousands of dollars, a lot of money. And I remember thinking, holy cow, like I've never given this much before. And I wasn't even certain that I heard correctly. So I just kind of waited and it kept, the impression just kept getting stronger and stronger. And I was like, okay. So I wrote it out. But when I wrote it out, I made sure that people saw how much I wrote it out for. I couldn't have been more obvious. It used to be when you hold your, um, remember they'd say, hold your um, offering up and we're going to pray? Well, normally you would fold your check. <laughs> Woo! And as I put it in the offering, I heard the voice of God so clearly say, you just got your reward. I was like, <laughs> can I have my check back? <laughs> because I knew I wasn't going to receive anything more for that. And that was a lot of money. But I got my full reward. You see, you could be called to be up here on the worship team and just be like, man, they're going to they're gonna hear me rip on this. And I, I, Oh, it's going to sound so good. Matthew's going to be like, wow, man, that was awesome. When you did blah, 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 or whatever that was. <laughs> wow. A star is born. <laughs> you just got your temporary reward because you'll not bring it for eternity. Now, if he would have got up on there and went and did all that, and he was like, giving glory to God, wants to like hit these notes just right because he knows that it's going to usher you into the presence of God. He knows that your heart is going to be touched. And he's not thinking about Rachel. He's not thinking about Matthew, but he's making sure that everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing because he's got on that lead mic or whatever that looks like. And it's because, it's not because they're he's in competition with anybody else it's because he wants you to have your heart connected to the father's heart and for jesus to be able to touch you now he has an eternal reward you see the difference hebrews chapter 6 verse 1 Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms, of the laying on of hands, of the resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. Eternal judgment was considered just an elementary principle of Christ. In North America, my concern is, because what I'm hearing from the Lord is why it became my concern, is that we are losing the real crux of Christianity. That we are whitewashed. And we don't want to be whitewashed. We want to actually obey and we can choose not to. We have the free will. God put the tree in the garden. He didn't have to put the tree in the garden, did he? I'm like, God, why'd you put the tree in the garden? What was the point of putting the tree in the garden in the first place? He said, because I created man after my own image. So they could be free to make their choices. The reason why he wants us to obey him is because he knows what's best. It's not because he's bossy. It's not because he needs the attention. 
Because he knows if you live your life like this, this is going to be your outcome. Because he's righteous and he is holy. Yes, he is merciful. And yes, he has grace. But the grace is to empower us to live a life that is worthy of him. Because we'll stand before him. You can't run or we can't hide. Eternity is a long time. We look at this life, it, James says it's, a, it's like a vapor. It's literally like blink, blink of an eye. That's it. And then we have all of eternity. If we, we, we lay up our treasures here on earth, what good is it going to be? Because I'm gone and they're still here. One of the greatest things I can do is, is to obey God so that I can have eternal rewards, so that, because we're going to be occupying. We're not, we're not just going to, you're not, you're not up in heaven just like, woo. You go into the next life, if you understand what I'm saying. It's the next phase. We've already entered into eternity. What are you going to do when you're, when you're with Jesus? I mean, we're going to worship. We're going to sing holy, holy, holy. Over and over again, because we're going to be like, wow, he's holy. Whoa, he's holy. I mean, it's going to be phenomenal, but that's not all that we're going to do. Some of you are going to be teachers in heaven. Some of you, if, if, if this is like your gift, I mean, if you saw me down here trying to dance or sing, I'm probably not going to be on the worship team. But can you imagine what the worshipers are going to look like and be like? It's good stuff. It says eternal judgment. That means eternal judgment is a decision that will stand forever. Say forever. Forever. God will make a decision. There will be no revision to his decision. What we do with the cross determines where we live. What I do with the cross determines where I live. But the way we live as believers determines how we will live. So one determines where, the other one determines how. And then there's everything in between. If I believe that the cross is where Jesus died for the forgiveness of my sins, then I'm going to heaven. That's where. How I live my life and what I do with what God's given me will determine how. James chapter 4, verse 13. Come now, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city, spend a year there, buy and sell, and make a profit. Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this or that. But now you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. So, <clears throat> let's say that whatever you do for the next 24 hours, whatever I do for the next 24 hours, will determine how I live the next 500 years. Will what you do look a little different? If you knew that what you do in the next 24 hours... It's going to dictate how you live for the next 500 years. Can you even imagine that? It's, it's hard to imagine because all we see is 80 plus years. But yet it matters. And it matters to God. And it should matter to us. Because there are these eternal rewards Do you think that you would live life with more purpose? Do you think that you would love unconditionally? 
It's so easy to love when someone's giving you something in return. It's so hard when they're not. But I think there's an eternal reward there. Do you think that you would serve? There are so many areas here at church and then even outside of church that God has called you to. Are you doing what he's called you to do? Am I doing what he's called me to do? I can't answer that for you. <clears throat> you can only answer that for yourself. Because we're builders, that's what the word says. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. The word says, and unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Because we're builders. And he's a builder. We're made after his image. That's why it's no surprise to me that there's so many entrepreneurs in here. Because it's something that, it's, it's in us. It's, there's a desire to be creative. There's a desire to build. According to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which I have laid, which is Christ Jesus. Now if anyone... <clears throat> builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear, for the day will declare it. I'm talking about the judgment day. Because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. Say reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet as though through fire. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. Hard to believe all this is in there, isn't it? For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you seems to be wise in this age, let him become a fool, that he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he catches the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise and that they are futile. Therefore, let no one boast in men. For all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas, Bill Johnson... Randy Clark, Lisa Bevere, we do this, Barbara Yoder, which stream are you in? I'm in this stream, yeah, we're in the healing stream, no, 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 we're in the prophetic stream. No, we're in the grace stream. We follow Bethel. I can go back on sabbatical. <clears throat> These are all things I'm thinking about that God's dealing with me on. Can you love someone who doesn't love you? Do you need a reward now? Or do you just want to storm up in heaven? I cried. I woke up one morning. I don't want to bring condemnation. There's no shame. But I hope to bring conviction. I woke up one morning just feeling condemned, I'll be honest, as I was studying this. I'm like, I'm a worthless, no good, blah, blah, blah. You know, I had like everywhere, I'm not doing anything that's making any eternal difference at all. I'm probably not going to have any rewards, blah, 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 blah. And then I realized that that was condemnation. It was the enemy. But it did make me search my heart and ask myself. And I had to be real. Oh, it's hard. It's so much easier to fake it. When you have to actually get down in here, 
and deal with how you're, how, how's this deal doing? It's like, it's hard. It's easier, way easier just to let that stuff go. Yeah, I've made mistakes in the past. We're just going to let that go. But you have to deal with them. You can repent from them. And then I believe they're forgiven. And I believe then when we get to heaven that God's not going to look at the book because now it's gone. Oh, praise Jesus. I'm like repenting for everything. Yes, that time I gave that. Yep, that time I did this. Yep, that time I said this and it wasn't really you, but I just said it was you. Because I wanted to look good and be spiritual. Come on. Repent of those things now so they get erased from your book. So that when he opens up his book, it looks more like our book. Good news is we still have time. At least I don't know. If we walk out of here, what happens, right? We don't know. So the temporal things are the wood, the hay, and the straw. Because those things, when the fire comes to it, they're, shh, they're gone. Those are the things that we've done in this life that do not have an eternal reward. And we're, we're going to be going like this because as a fire, you are saved. But I want, I, I hope that, I'm sure there will be some of that. But I don't want just wood, hay, and stubble, straw. It says there's also precious stones silver and gold they're more purified by the fire you put fire to gold and silver and the precious stones it becomes more beautiful those are your eternal rewards so I said God what's going to What's going to judge us? Jeremiah said the word of God judges us. It's the word. Sharper than a two-edged stone. Sword. So it's important that we know the word of God. Um, in John chapter 12, Jesus talks about, he says, the words that I speak will judge you in the last day. It's one of the things when we started this church, um, how many of you know, like charismatic people, I mean, we just move with the spirit. We feel goosebumps. I love all of that. I love feeling the presence of God. I am a presence driven woman and I love it but I said we have to have the word you can't have the spirit without the word and you can't have the word without the spirit because if you have the word without the spirit you're going to have judgment and you're going to be very religious because you're going to use the word to smack everybody over the head with it but when you have the word and the spirit together that's how it was supposed to be then you're going to have the fullness of what God is and who he is. So we used to have um, kingdom living courses, and I pray still someday that we'll get resurrected or we'll do something different. But I, I love the word. I, lo I love teachers. I love teachers that can, that can just take the word and pull all this stuff out, and you're like, I have read that for 20-something years, and I never saw that. And they, can, they just have a way of, of, of like taking their, like their pencil or their pen and just, like just going right through it. So it cuts right through it and opens it up. I love it. I love. When I study, I have like, I, I look at probably seven different translations of the scripture. I don't just read it in the New King James. I go to the NIV. I go to the NET. I go to the NLT. I, I, I'm, in, I'm in every, tr the message. I, I, I want to see all the different versions and translations of that scripture that brings it to life. And then they usually get my scriptures back there and it's like a list because I don't have like one or two scriptures because I want to see all of it weaved in and out. What are you saying? I can't just take one scripture and hang it out of, con out of context and say, oh, this is what it means. No, it doesn't. Study the word. Don't read the word. It says to study the word to rightly show yourself approved before God and men, but God first. First. 
Ephesians, I'm oh, sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. I said that because I was thinking about knowing your calling. Because I was thinking a lot about this. When I started the boutique, I was like, you know, I don't want uh, something that just feels empty. I said it has to have some kind of purpose behind it. You can go online and buy stuff anywhere. Why would I do this? What, what looks different about it? Well, one of the things is, is that I want to help empower women. I'm crazy about women. And I want to see women come into their rightful place. Not as feminists, not pushing men aside, but walking beside them so that we can see the fullness of the body of Christ and the kingdom of God. And so I know that there are a lot of women who are, are, are just in really hard situations. So I thought, well, God, how about if like every month or so I change a different nonprofit and that boutique can support a nonprofit? And so that gives it purpose so I can have an eternal reward because I don't want to just have a temporal reward. I don't want you just to buy pretty things. I want you to actually know that your money is serving a purpose. And then not only that, is it helping to empower women who find themselves in bad, hard places, but how many of you know that sometimes after a long day, you just want to get in the bath? Well, I provide bath bombs. There you go. Is that an eternal reward? I'm not sure it is, but at least you're going to enjoy relaxing. Do you understand what I'm saying? We want to do something that actually is going to make a difference. Ask yourself, if you are an entrepreneur, you have a business, how is your business serving the kingdom of God? You can know your calling. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. Do you not know that in a race, all the runners run? They run their very best to win. I'm reading out of the Amplified. But only one receives the prize. Run your race in such a way that you may seize the prize and make it yours. Now every athlete who goes into training and competes in the games is disciplined and exercises self-control in all things. They do it to win a crown that withers. But we, we do it to receive an imperishable crown that cannot wither. Therefore, I do not run without a definite goal. I do not flail around like one beating the air, like just shadow boxing, but like a boxer. I strictly discipline my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached, after I have preached the gospel to others, I myself will not somehow become disqualified and unfit for service. That's not just talking about us to whoever's standing up here at the platform. Each and every one of you are called to preach the gospel. He said to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That wasn't somebody that was standing in front of a, t of a TV screen or someone that is behind a camera. That is for you. That is for you. Each and every one of us is called to preach the gospel. So you don't want to be disqualified. It says that we can be disqualified. It's the true word. This is hard to hear. This, you're right. It's not a jumping, shouting word. I'm not looking for a bunch of amens. Because that's a temporal reward. <laughs> Your life will look so different. My life is going to look so different. Because every decision I'm making, I'm thinking about that. Because yeah. I don't know. None of us know. I've gotten COVID. I'm just going to say it publicly. Praise Jesus. It's done. But I don't know. Do you know that you're going to wake up tomorrow morning? I don't know, but I got my notebook out and my pen. It was time to repent. Because I'm going to stand, and you're going to stand, and you cannot point your finger at anyone. Do you know, Paul said he finished the race. He did, couldn't have said he finished the race if he did not know where he was going. You have to know where you're going. Know what you're called to. It 
It says in Ephesians 2, verse chapter 8, I'm sorry, chapter 8. If you have a chapter 8 in Ephesians, let me know. Ephesians 2, verse 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And that word should is very important. It doesn't say that we will. It says that these are prepared beforehand. All of these things were prepared beforehand that we should walk in them, but we get to choose whether we do or not. Remember I said that if you are saved, you are born again, you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, then you know where you're going. But how you live is based and determined by what we do here on earth. Stephen, you have a call on your life for music and creativity. And you can choose to embrace that call and watch the amount of people's lives that you will impact as a result. You could not use your guitar and sing, but there's a healing anointing that moves when you do. You could choose not to do it, but because you're choosing to do it, you're getting eternal rewards because the amount of people that were in here on Friday night that got touched in their heart because people are choosing to use their gifts to glorify God. And why not? Somebody said, well, I don't care about eternal rewards. Well, great. I do. It's for all of eternity. You're saying that with an 80 plus years mindset. For all of eternity. How you should walk in them literally means how to regulate one's life. I love when I first met Max, he was the, um, the guy that had the invisible water, you know, that would come over and go, woo, like, you know, like the spirit was like pouring it over your head. He was so out there. I thought, oh, Jesus, help me. And then he was, he was the grace monster. Everything was grace. And I was like, yeah, but you have to have works. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. And we would argue. And I, I, I would spend at least an hour on the phone at a time just to start. And we'd go through the scriptures, and he would go through them back to me, and then he would twist them, and then I would tell him that this is really sad. <laughs> but it was his revelation at the time, let's just say that. But him challenging me all the time, I got so many awesome messages as a result. And one of them was this, that you were created for good works. And I remember when I gave that message, he just sat there like, huh. And I said, mm-hmm. You're saved by grace through faith, but you're saved for good works. We're supposed to be doing something. And now look at him. Now I sit and listen to him teach, and I'm like, <laughs> oh, my God. If you don't know, these two have a bromance going on. It's funny. Ecclesiastes talks about how he put eternity in our hearts, chapter 3. But I want to read um, verse 14. I know that whatever God does, it shall be forever. And nothing can be added to it, and nothing can be taken from it. God does it, that men should fear before him. You say, well, that's Old Testament. He's the same today, yesterday, and forever. He changes not. We, in the new covenant, are blessed by the fact that we have the blood of Christ that has removed our sin and that we are now alive in him. That which has already been 
and what is to be has already been. And God requires an account of what is past. Like I said, we're going to be accountable. I say that your past doesn't define you, it refines you, but let it refine you. We will be accountable for what we do. So don't belittle what God's called you to do. Don't look and see what somebody else is doing and think they have a greater reward. I used to look at the impact um, of Bethel Church, and I was like, oh, God, they're, being, they're, they're like worldwide impact. It's crazy what they're doing. You know, and, and I, w I would compare what it is that we're doing, and I'm like, oh, can't even hold a match for that. You know, and he said, did I call you to do that? Wow. How about if I just do what he's called me to do? And you do what God's called you to do. And let's not judge each other constantly. It's his business. Psalm 139, verse 13 says, For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth, your eyes saw my substance, being yet an unformed. And in your book they were written, the days fashioned for me when as yet there were none of them. You have a book, and everything that God has for you is written in that book. Everything. And it says in, in Daniel that those books will be opened. And what is he going to read? Is, he going to, are you, are your, is your book going to match the life book that he wrote for you, your destiny, your call, and your purpose? I want my book to look like his book. And everything I've done in the past that did not line up, I have repented from that I know of. And he keeps bringing things up. And I'm like, oh, geez, I thought you forgot about that. He's got a memory. Let me tell you something. He'll remember things that you may not remember, but he will bring them to your attention. And when he brings them to your attention, you have an opportunity to do something with it. It's not for condemnation, it's for your benefit. And it's for the benefit of the body of Christ. Because I have need of every single one of you. And you, you have to ooh, embrace what it is that God's called you to do. Because you have people that God has written in your book. Today, God knew you were going to be here. And it's in your book. It's not a coincidence. This is the day that... Oh, yeah, Matthew got up and plotted Max. It's written. I'll close with this. First John chapter 2, verse 16. Don't love the world's ways. Don't love the world's goods. Love the world... Love of the world squeezes out the love of the Father. Practically everything that goes on in the world, wanting your own way, wanting everything for yourself, wanting to appear important, has nothing to do with the Father. It just isolates you from him. Ooh, remember at the beginning of the service, and I said that there was a connection lost? Ask God. Is the love of the world squeezing out my love for you, Father? Practically everything that goes on in the world, wanting our own way, wanting everything for ourselves, wanting to appear important. Come on. That is, the, that is, that is us. That's the United States right there in a nutshell. The world and all of its wanting, wanting and wanting, is on the way out. But whoever does what God wants is set for eternity. Woo, I want to be doing what God wants. I want to be set for eternity. I want to, um, so Joshua, or not Joshua, well, Joshua, but um, Howard's, Alyssa, and why am I drawing a blank? Lucas. And 
that's Joshua's um, brother. I was so moved when I read their Facebook post saying that every week they wanted to, they wanted to know if anyone on their Facebook knew of a family that was in need that would not be able to experience Christmas and that like presents and you know maybe the food and all the stuff that all the things that go with it that we like to do and spend with family they wanted to know every week leading up until Christmas because they were going to provide that for that family I thought I wonder why they're so successful I know how they live they could live way larger He pulls up here in this really fancy car, and we're like, wow. And he's like, oh, yeah. He said, yeah, my wife saw me looking at it online. No big deal. Why? Because his treasures aren't here. And if you're hearing me, if you're watching this, praise God. And he's not, this is not his reward. I can't take away his reward. But Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I think that's amazing. Give God praise. Um, I got this word. I'm going to share it real quick. It says, I feel like God is taking many through transition and repositionings. They aren't aware of what he's doing and are asking what's happening to me. Why are bad things happening all around me? Completely unaware that his repositioning and bringing trans, is, he's bringing you into a repositioning and bringing transition. You are in transition. Let me say it like that. Into the next thing. I believe that word's for you, if not for anyone else, but definitely. And if that's for you, grab a hold of it. Um, and then finally, um, I was down in worship, and uh, no, I, I do this all the time, and my team always goes, oh my gosh, could we have talked about it first? No, I know. Well, oh well. Um, so we'll have to see how we ha can do this because I don't know because nobody's been scheduled. Um, but I want to start fire starters um, back up. And um, I just felt like I heard the Lord say, keep not the little ones from me. And so um, not that this is keeping them from him, but I'm just going to be obedient. And uh, so we'll have to figure out how to do that. I'll um, be talking to Thea and uh, we have to get people scheduled. So I don't know if it'll be next week, because I know many of you are at home because of the fact that you have children. And so anyway, we want to be able to open that back up and uh, trust God with it all. Amen? All right, stand to your feet if you would. All right. Was that a good word or what? So good. Macy, can you come up here real quick? Come up here, buddy. What's up, dude? This is Macy. This is my one, two, second daughter. <laughs> Number two out of four. Um, but I just think it's so true of what her word was this morning that I, honestly, at the beginning of this year when COVID hit, um, I, I felt like this year was going to be the great revealer of our hearts. And more than anything, um, as a result of what happened, there was our hearts were opened up and revealed to what we th what we thought was important no longer became important for us. See, I want to provide for her. But at the end of the day, I want to provide an eternal inheritance for her. I don't want to say, hey, you have a car. You didn't have a dad growing up because he worked so hard. But you have a car, so good for you. Or good, good, you know what? You're going to go to a good school instead of a bad school, but you didn't have a dad. She needs to have a dad. She needs to know that what's important in eternity is what's actually important in this life. And it's not just the temporary things of this world. So thank you so much for the... Um, realignment of our hearts and the focus on things that actually matter because that's what's actually that's when I'm going to see her on the other side someday and I'm going to be able to say hey you're here because we were able to walk faithfully together with Jesus for what he called us to do and that's what matters more than anything so I want to just encourage and, and, and just encourage all of us to take that challenge to allow our hearts to be revealed before the Lord, to actually open up what it is, uh, that the things that we have hidden, and let him to get in and to deal with those things in our hearts. Thanks, sweetie. Um,
All right, so I want to, I've got a couple of quick announcements. We're having our Winter Wonderland service on December 20th. Uh, it is at 10 o'clock, same time as always. Great. Um, <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, it's going to be a, a fun time. We're going to have some, some new things that we're doing. The children are doing a little mashup that we're going to record of them um, uh, talking through the Christmas story. And then the worship team's got some exciting things. There's some hidden musical talents that are going to be coming out that week. So, uh, please, grab some invitations. We printed off a bunch of these so that you can give them to family members or friends. And we really want just to be, um, you know, we want every Sunday to be welcoming, but we're, we're uh, really just going to have a fun time on this Sunday morning. So, if you would just invite people um, to come to this service and so that we can celebrate Christmas together. Um, also, Kingdom Business Network is something that we launched, uh, oh man, right before COVID, I think, hit. Earlier this year uh, is when we were really brainstorming it. And what that is, is it's a, a, a time for entrepreneurs to really to get together, to encourage one another, to testify of the things that the Lord has done um, in our businesses, and to challenge each other that we would actually conduct our business in a kingdom, God-honoring way, not just in a way to, to make money, but, you know, we want to make money because that's the only way we're going to keep our doors open, but at the end of the day, we want to make sure, again, that it has eternal significance and eternal value, and so it's a, it's a point of accountability. If you're a business owner or, or a leader in business, we want to invite you to come. Um, go to the Kingdom Business Network Facebook page, and we have an announcement on there uh, and, and a sign-up for you to join our Zoom call December 30th, I believe it is. December 30th at 1130, um, that you can come and, and we're going to encourage each other. Last one, we just, honestly, we just sat on the call and prayed for each other. It was amazing. And prayed for each other's businesses because we all need it right now. And we're going to continue to need it after all of this is over as well. So it's just a, it's a great place for business leaders to create community. All right, ministry team, please come forward. We do not want you to leave today without getting prayer if you need it. If you need healing in your body, if you need emotional healing, whatever it happens to be, we want to invite you to come forward and, and receive prayer for that. Uh, also, the bridge is right outside these doors here to the right. If you're new here, if you've been coming for a while and you feel like you don't know how to get connected or you want to get connected, uh, you're scared to get connected, whatever it is, take the brave step to stop by the bridge. We have a gift for you. We want to get to know you. Uh, we want to put a name to your face and get you plugged into community so that we can all run this race together. We know that we need one another to run this race. So have, uh, have a great week. You are blessed. We will see you all here next Sunday.